Okay, boys and girls, today we are going to do the SMG software flash tune by Frank Smith Tuning Tech. Um, at least we're going to do part of it today. Um, basically, the process goes something like this. You go online to their website, you put in your vehicle information, you fill out a particular form specific to your car, to the VIN, to the to the year, make a model, and all that good stuff. Then they send you an adapter, and you download their software. And what we're going to do is, we're going to hook up a laptop to their cable that plugs into the car. Um, we're going to then read the information from the car. That's going to create a file from the software. We're going to send that file back to the Frank Smith folks, and they're going to create the software tune file for us, specific to this car, registered to this car. They'll send that. Um, file back and then we'll upload it to the car and that should um, that should take care of the software tune for the SMG. Basically the tune is going to do a few things. It's sort of like the CSL version of the tune that Europe got but it's supposed to smooth out the shifts especially in, in the uh, lower gears. Um, it's supposed to make the shifts uh, quicker, more responsive and I think it's supposed to also do some um, um, rev matching on, on downship. So everyone that I've talked to says uh, it's a great investment. Uh, it's under a couple hundred bucks. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to try to walk you through here. And you know how we do it here uh, on this channel, man. If we got a motherfucker to bit, that's what we're going to do. So it's not always going to go right. You're going to see all the successes and the failures along with me. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to walk you through the instructions just as Frank Smith is going to walk it through with me according to instructions on his website that I have downloaded. So, step number one, purchase the TTFS SMG software on the website and upload your custom build sheet. I've done that and I'll show you how to do that. Um, I'll run some clips here of exactly what you need to do in order to do that. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the Tuning Tech FS website. Then you go to products and remote tunes and then the SMG software right here and click on that. And here, here's the product. Now before you do anything, you need to scroll down about midway down and you need to do this download and complete the up and upload the SMG tune build sheet. So you want to click on this, which is a PDF. You'll probably want to print this out and fill it out and then rescan it as a PDF. And here's where you're going to put in all your personal information, your vehicle information, make your model, mileage, VIN, all that good stuff, and any notes or questions or comments you might have. And once you've got that filled out and scanned and saved as a PDF on your computer, you're then going to come back here and upload it here and uh, send the build sheet to them. And then you'll just go through and just add this product to the cart and check out, pay for it. And so what they'll do then once they have the build sheet is um, they'll send you the software cable that connects from your laptop to the uh, car's OBD2 port. Now in the meantime, while you're waiting for the cable to get sent, you can come down here and click on the Pro Tuner software. This is the software that's actually going to make all this happen. Um, and you're going to need to install this on your laptop. And when you install it, you want to install it on your desktop. So I've created a file folder called M3 Pro Tuner. And here's where you'll have the uh, at least one file, maybe two. You'll have a drive installer or the Pro Tuner executable. But this is where you want to um, download, unzip, and install this. So you'll create the file folder, then you'll um, move these fo and these files into the folder. And this is the the uh, software you're going to run that's going to make all the magic happen. So you can do that while you're waiting for uh, the uh, the cable to show up and then once you do that um, it's just a matter of uh, making all the connections and uh, doing the uh, license uh, download and then the uh, the, the new uh, software upgrade so that's that's kind of the, the first steps you're going to need to do before um, they actually send you the cable uh, once your payment is processed you'll be shipped the certified TTFS decan cable and what they're going to do is they're going to ship you 
this little booty bag here, and it's going to come with the cable that you're going to need in order to talk to your car. This will get plugged from your laptop to the car. Okay. So download the ProTuner software on your desktop. You can download that file from their software page. I've done that as well, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, now once the ProTuner software is installed, you'll need to create a new file folder on your desktop. We've done that. And once that's created, put the ProTuner software in that folder. We have done that. Okay, page two. Now this is where the rubber starts to meet the road here. Okay, it's extremely important here, as it says, to uh, connect your car to a stable power source. While reading and riding your vehicle's DME, low battery voltage could result while conducting these steps that will cause the DME to crash. Okay, so normally I have a, a battery tender connected to the car. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, instead of just hooking it to the battery tender while we do this stuff, I've got an extra battery charger, and I'm going to stick that on the um, 10 amp manual setting in order to get it a bit more juice while we're doing this stuff. So why don't we go ahead and do that and put, it, put the car on the charger before we start to do anything else. Okay, here's my battery charger. I've got a couple settings for it. I can either set it over here, automatic 10 amp 12 volt, or I can do a manual 50 amp engine start. I think I'm probably going to set the 50 amp engine start just to make sure it's got plenty of juice so there's no um, loss of power or anything like that. So let me set this up and hook this to the battery. That's pretty good. Okay. Okay, it says step two is to open the Pro Tuner on your computer and connect the TTFS cable to the laptop computer and then the, OD, the uh, OBD2 port. So let's do that. I'm going to open up the ProTuner software. Which... And... Run the ProTuner software. Sure, why not? Now we're going to connect the cable to the OBD2 port. So let's do that. Okay, I don't know if you can see this or not, but right here, that's the ODB2 port. And we're gonna plug this little bastard in here and make sure we put it in right. Looks good. Okay, I think we're finally in business here. I think I just had to handshake this thing a little bit better with connecting to it. So now I've got it plugged in and it says TTFS Pro Decan detected, ready to upgrade. All right, we're gonna put the car in the on position. Shouldn't be that fucking difficult. Let's try this again. No device is detected. Plug in there. Plug in there. No, nope, I give up. I fucking give up. That's it. I ain't doing shit till they call me back. I don't have time for this. So here's the thing, I spent 20 years around computers. I worked for a software development company for 20 years. I built computers, I built servers. I'd like to think I know quite a bit about them, 
So it, this isn't like foreign to me when I'm dealing with laptops and connectors and ports and stuff like this. This stuff just should not be that difficult. I don't know why such simple tasks seem to be so difficult when it's just, it should be just a matter of USB port, ODB2 port, they talk to one another, they sync up, that's it. I mean, it, this handshaking problem should not be that difficult. I don't know, and I'm getting some weird things happening with the software, the Frank Smith tuning software, it puts like a blank white bar up and that it just goes away, so I don't know if it's bugs in the program or what, but this is just so frustrating. You know, I spent two hours farting around with this. I could have made a hundred or two hundred dollars if I was working right now. But taking time off to put my work aside to do this, it's costing me money now. So, we'll see how it goes. You're supposed to call me back. I left a message, so if I don't hear back from them by 4.35 o'clock, I'm going to call them back. Because they close at 6, and I'm not waiting around another day. i got to at least give them a license file so they can do their thing. Can't afford to waste another day. So that's the update. Turn to this tomorrow. Um, pretty disappointed that couldn't really get much done. In fact, I really can't think of anything we got done. Um, it is what it is. Stay tuned. start. Um, it wouldn't be a Chris World TV improvement project if things didn't turn into a fuster club. Um, but that's kind of just the way things happen around here. So here's basically what happened. Um, in the process of trying to get the laptop connected to the uh, car, uh, the OBD2 port, there ended up being some synchronization issues between the laptop and the and, and the car. And according to the instructions with Frank Smith, you plug the cable. Um, let me grab the cable here. You plug the this end obviously into your laptop. And then you plug this end into the car, and things should sync up. They should talk to one another. You should be able to download, read the OBD2. Uh, diagnostics, download, read out of the DME, and create a license file. Well, no matter what happened, no matter how steadfast I followed those instructions, it did not work. So after hours of farting around with it, just on a lark, I connected the car side first, then to the laptop. And for whatever reason, that solved the connectivity problem between the laptop and the car. It shouldn't have, in theory, it should not make any difference whatsoever, but I think it has something to do probably with my laptop or just the way the USB was able to sniff out the port drive, or the, the, the USB drive and the cable connected to it and stuff. So you probably won't have to do that. You, should, you probably won't have to worry about that, but that, that slowed me down <laughs> considerably. That pretty much wasted an entire day um, just dealing with that. And once I did that, I was able to um, get a good connection, um, read the OBD2 diagnostics, create a file for that, and then hit the uh, collect license button and create a file for that as well. And then I uploaded that or emailed that to um, the boys, Frank, uh, Frank Smith. So, and I, I got to say that, that Justin at, uh, at Frank Smith, he called me and traded we tried to work with me to figure out what this connectivity problem was. And we were, you know, we were both scratching our heads as to why it, it wasn't working. It should have worked 
You know, first time we're out of the box, this is not a complicated thing. I've been around computers my whole life. I've built them, I've maintained them, I've taken them apart, reverse engineered them. This is not something I'm not familiar with. But for whatever reason, um, we just hit a little bit of a, a roadblock there, but we got past it. So, so I sent the files to Frank Smith and it should only take a day or two to get them, but for whatever reason, uh, my emails kept going into their spam folder and they didn't get my files. So I kept waiting. So it's been about eight or nine days or a little over a week and I hadn't got my uh, tuning files back. So I kind of been just in a holding pattern since then. So finally I talked to Frank today. We were able to get uh, my tuning files. They went into their spam folder. They found them, the emails with my files. They created the tuning files. <laughs> and then another roadblock was we're trying to send the files back to me that I can, so I can upload them to the car. And my firewall is blocking all the files coming in because the tuning files got uh, goofy, you know, file name extensions and stuff like that that my firewall doesn't like. And even zipping them doesn't help, doing all this, that, and the other. So we're jumping through all kinds of hoops just trying to, you know, make something that should be so easy more complicated than it needs to be. But finally, I was able to get the files. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back a couple steps and just show you what it looks like to read the OBD2 and collect the license file. And since I already have the upload files from Tune, um, once I walk you through that, we should be able to connect, upload the uh, Tune files. And in theory, we should be good to go. But you know how that is around here. Things never seem to go as planned, so um, well, we'll just see how it goes. We'll just play it by ear. So let's get started. And we're going to open up the Pro Tuner software. Connect to the car. Now this time I'm going to connect to the car first again. Ugh. That seemed to want to work for my laptop. And let's see if we get any good lights here. Okay, there we go. We got a green light. Okay, so that's connected. I got the car connected to the battery. We've already walked through that. Put all the power on. And let's do... And we're going to... license. This is where you put your license in, put your name in. And it creates the license. And then do a read DME. And this will take about five minutes to do. And once this done, you will send the license file, a .lic file, and the uh, OBD2 DME readout file to the boys at Frank Smith and that's when they'll create your tune file. And they'll send you back two files when they got all their stuff done. They'll send you back an ENC file which is like the tune file itself and then a key file that's got your name in it. And once you've got those two things, you'll load those back in the same folder. And uh, then you'll go through the process of doing the upload. So when everything's connected right and you get good signals and things are talking to one another, it shouldn't be that complicated. So your mileage of error. If you run into problems and you're having trouble connecting your laptop to the uh, OBD2 port on your M3, 
just for grins, connect it backwards. Connect it to the OBD2 first. Um, that just seemed to work with, with my laptop. I think it's a laptop more than the car. I don't think it, for the car, the car cares. Um, but the laptop seemed to uh, prefer having this signal come from the car before I plugged in the USB. Why, I have no idea. It, in theory, it shouldn't make any difference. Okay. Then you create your file, you save it, and you're good to go. Okay, so now, what we want to do is we want to try to upload these dudes. Let's do reflash DME. Got the two files in there I need. The key and the ENC file. Okay, upgrade 3%, 5%, seems to be working, 90%. Okay, key off for 10 seconds. Key back on and press OK to continue. Key off for 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Press OK. Upgrade successful. Should be it. Turn the car off. Unplug. Okay. I think we're in business, folks. So that's that. When your cables hook up, properly, <laughs> things really aren't that difficult. Um, so let's put all this shit away. Let's get in the car and let's, let's see if we can tell the difference. Let's see if the Frank Smith tune is actually installed, makes a difference in how the car drives. All right, let's see how it does here. quicker. Um, kind of reminds me of Sport Chrono on a Porsche. Um, and also the, the mapping, it, it feels like it feels like the car is being pulled a little bit like Sport Chrono as well. Anyone familiar with Porsches knows when you flip the Sport Chrono on, it feels like the car goes from being pushed a bit to being pulled a bit. Maybe a little bit of both. You just feel like you got a little bit more oomph going on. in the shifts. I've got it on uh, three. Let's go to four. Sometimes I go between four and five. You know, 
I can I can hear the the the, the blipping on the on on the sh on the downshifts, but because I don't have an aftermarket exhaust on it, it's kind of quiet. So you kind of really have to listen for it in order to hear it. If I had an aftermarket exhaust on it, I think it would be more pronounced and sound a lot better than it does. I guess the best way to describe the, the Frank Smith tune is, I mean, it's subtle. It's subtle, but it makes a difference. I mean, if you're looking to completely transform the car from, you know, from what it is to something it's not, then it, I think you're asking for a little bit too much. That's probably a stretch, but it really smooths out the uh, the rough spots in the SMG, and I'd say it's definitely for 189 bucks. It's kind of hard to go wrong. Now, the installation was kind of a pain in the ass because of the cable and the spam. The email is going to spam filters and all this stuff, so that kind of slowed things down, but. Other than that, I mean, there aren't that many upgrades, okay, that you can do for under 200 bucks that you're probably going to notice and get as much um, use out of on a daily basis. So, you know, when you're, when you're thinking about spending 200 bucks or less, your options are pretty limited. I mean, what are you going to put on your car that's going to make a whole hell of a lot of difference? Not, not that much. I tell you what, this is in drive. It's actually not bad in drive now. I almost forgot I had it in drive. Uh, I thought I still had it in manual mode. But I was getting ready to shift the paddles. I'm waiting. It's already in the right gear. It's doing what it should. So if, you know, if you're someone who drives your car in traffic and you like to stick it in drive, which, I mean, I can totally see that. Um, you're not going to lose man points with me if you're stuck in traffic for a while and you just want to stick it in drive, let the car do the work then I think it makes it, it makes a moderate difference moderate improvement yeah going down to drive definitely it shifted down a gear automatically when I went into drive mode from where I was if I was in third I put it in drive and it immediately went to fourth which is what it really should do so we're on a hard acceleration here in drive up to fifth. I can feel it there a bit. When I let off the gas, I think it senses it. Okay, I'm not accelerating anymore. I don't need to stay in fifth gear uh, to pull higher revs and keep accelerating. So then it downshifted, or uh, it went in sixth gear, sort of overdrive gear. So that was a good move on this part. So, I mean, overall, pretty hard to complain for you know 200 bucks probably can't go wrong it's certainly not any worse than what it was I didn't really think it was that bad to begin with I think that the reputation is you know I think it's a bit overplayed to be quite honest with you if you know how to drive the SMG you drive it kind of like a manual you lift off the gas a bit as you're shifting it makes a big difference but this really the, the tune smooths out the uh, the rough spots um, and the stock setup of the SMG. So, um, if you've got any hesitation about forking over a couple bills to get it, I'd recommend it. I think you're going to do yourselves a service uh, by picking it up. And quite honestly, I think it's actually, I think it's done just as much for the uh, uh, for the car for the training and drive mode as it is for manual mode. Um, it's much more tolerable in manual mode now, or excuse me, drive mode, than it was before. I mean, before it, it was pretty good in manual mode. Didn't really want to put it in drive mode. It just it, it didn't know what gear it wanted to be in. Uh, but now it kind of it, it definitely knows what gear it should be in, and it seems to predict what you're doing with the car far better than the stock setup. So, so there you go. That's the that's the long and short of it, folks. Frank Smith Tuning Tech E46 M3 SMG Tune. Uh, go ahead and pick yourselves up a copy of the software, get it installed, let me know what you think. You have any questions, comments, suggestions? Drop them in the comments below the video. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. If you haven't shared, shared. And we'll catch you later. Thanks.